There is one question that is very important for people when it comes to the lawyers. And maybe this question stops you from fighting for your rights or preventing some problems. This question is how much do they charge? And I met with a very popular lawyer and I asked him this question. Uh, we talk about the fees, about uh, when the client needs to pay, uh, will you get a compensation in case if you open the case and you want it. So we discuss all these questions and some other uh, topics in this video. So please watch it till the end. But before we start, don't forget to click a like button. Hi, Rush, how are you doing? I am good. Thank you, Dennis. So happy to, to, to see you here and finally we met and uh, have a chance to, to discuss some important topics for our viewers. Uh, and uh, before we start, can you please tell a few words about uh, yourself? Uh, what do you do? Thank you so much for having me, first of all. Uh, what I do, I'm a lawyer by profession. I've been in this practice for the past 18 years in Dubai uh, as a lawyer. And for the past 15 years, I can say that I am more focused on uh, the real estate law and real estate market. Uh, although we take on all kinds of cases and we present clients in different fields, but my main focus nowadays is more on, on real estate. Um, we have a local law firm that we have the right of audience before all uh, courts in UAE. Um, majority of our clients are from Dubai though. So that's, uh, that's what I do. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, Arash, uh, there are a lot of topics that uh, we can discuss, uh, but I want to start with uh, mainly, uh, maybe one of the main ones that uh, I think uh, some of my clients have uh, in their mind. Uh, it's obvious for them that they need to approach the lawyer to discuss something before the problem arrives, and sometimes the problem already arrived and they need to, to approach you. Uh, yeah. But they are not uh, aware how much will it cost to to hire a lawyer. So maybe we will not go into like deep details about each cases. But if you can give us an idea about uh, uh, like the average fees, not like yours directly, but average fees on the market, yeah. how much does it cost to to hire uh, the lawyer? A lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> No, but that, that at least uh, that's what people think that uh, it costs them a lot to hire a lawyer. See, Dennis, uh, let me tell you my experience, what I felt. In majority of uh, situation we, we encounter is that clients, they think that why they need a lawyer at the first place. It's not about the fee itself. It's about seeing value in the services that a lawyer is providing. If they know if this service is valuable to them enough, they won't have any issues on the financial side. So it's not about being high or low. In my opinion, in my opinion, and it's not just because I am a lawyer, in my opinion, the fees that you will pay a lawyer, it's much, much less that the damages and consequences of not hiring a lawyer will bring to you. So just to give your uh, audience an idea about how lawyers work and when it comes especially to, to payments. We have two types of uh, payments or professional fees, the way that we call it. It's either charged on lump sum basis or uh, on hourly basis. Mm -hmm. When we want to file a case against someone, we want to uh, sue someone or someone is being sued, normally in this kind of cases, we take a lump sum fee. So we will tell you, Dennis, we will take you, charge you X amount of money, and we will represent you from A to Z, all stages of court. The reason we are able to charge lump sum is because we can predict the scope of work. So someone wants to claim a money from uh, the other party, easy. We know what is the scope, we know where we need to represent them, and up to which stage this matter will take. So we can predict more or less the amount of hours. So we give them a, a lump sum. On the other hand, there are situations that we are not aware of how many hours or what is the scope of work exactly. So we cannot predict, we cannot give them a lump sum. In those situations, we charge them on hourly basis. Meaning the number of hours that we work, we're gonna charge them as per those number of hours. We have a certain uh, uh, hourly rate that every lawyer has his own uh, rate, depending on their experience, depending on how many years they work, uh, 
type of law, uh, law firm that they represent and you know reputation so many things has uh, effect on this uh, on this rate and then as per that we're going to charge them mm -hmm. okay uh, so talking about the the lump sum uh is it a kind of a fixed amount or it as well depends on the amount that i'm claiming for another party just just give you an example let's say i have a i signed a, a contract okay and i want to claim one million from somebody because they defaulted on on the contract let's say it's like some deposit <laughs> and uh, if i have exactly the same case exactly the same contract with another party but i want to claim from them two million will the lump sum will be the same or it will be different very good question, Dennis. Um, see, the, the lump sum that we're gonna, just, let me just answer your question now. Uh, the amount will, will differ a little bit, I'll tell you why. Because when we want to decide about our lump sum fee, there are many factors that we consider before announcing the amount. Number one is the size of the case. When we say the size of the case, it means both importance and the claim amount involved, because the higher the amount is, the more sensitive the case is, the more most probably complicated the case is. And uh, based on that, so this uh, amount will definitely have a big role in determining our professional fee. So the higher amount, the professional fee will increase as well, because the, the, the case is bigger, it's huger, more important and more sensitive. And uh, there is another factor, which is the scope of work. Say, for example, there are cases that will not even reach the court of appeal because we have three stages of, of uh, court. Court of first instance, court of appeal, and court of cassation or the Supreme Court. So uh, not all cases will be entitled to, to be taken to the upper level. So depending on that, we're gonna say that, okay, if it's just going for the first instance, we're gonna charge less. If it's going all the way to the end, then we're gonna charge more because number of hours that we're gonna put is gonna be much more. So claim amount, scope of work, jurisdiction. Is it in Dubai? Is it in Abu Dhabi? Is it in uh, Ras Al Khaimah? Where is it, mm -hmm. you know? So that, that also um, changes the thing. Is it the court or is it the arbitration? So there are many factors that will uh, help us decide about, about our fee. So mm -hmm. to answer your question, no, they won't be the same fees because each mm -hmm. case will be examined separately. Okay, let's say I'm your client and I hired you to, to represent me in the court. When do I have to pay you these fees? Okay, um, <laughs> let me put it this way. We used to have a different policy prior to the COVID-19 Mm -hmm. And that policy was 100% uh, fee in advance. The okay. reason we do this, because we want to make sure that, okay, our fee is protected. Now we just focus on the work. We will not be distracted for every time, you know, just to follow up on our fees. And that will mm -hmm. help the client eventually if they understand it. So we used to take our fees all in advance and we used to work till the end. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, because we see that many clients are struggling financially, they won't be able to settle our fees all at once. So we made it very much flexible. The way that we charge is some clients, they feel more comfortable to, to pay smaller fees, but on a monthly basis. So they gave us PDCs and in a few months, they will settle all their fees. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they will say that, no, we are more comfortable. We can pay a larger amount, but make it easier for us. So what we do in that situation, we will announce that this much is our fees, um, half or you know half of this amount perhaps they will pay in advance. We start the case, and then the other half they will pay us when the first judgment is issued. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. we are talking about a period of time. It depends on the case, of course, from six months to one year. You mm -hmm. know, so they have that much of time to pay. And um, is it possible to get like let let's say once again I'm your client. Uh, we went to the court. We won the case. Is it possible for me to to get some compensation from another por person to cover some of the money that I paid for the for the court for the lawyer? Uh, can we do something like this? Great question. Um, so in Dubai and UAE, to be precise, um, lawyers' fee will not be uh, returned, but the court fees and whatever government fees you are paying to initiate the case that will be recovered. When, when you uh, win your case, um, the court will order the, the opponent 
not only pay you your, the money that you are claiming for, they will even ask you to pay back the court fees. So whatever court fees I, as a client, paid, the court will order the other party to pay me back. That will be recovered. Uh, but what you need to also understand is that mainly when we ask for, say, for example, a million dirham you're claiming, the judge not, will give us one million dirham. They will give an order to pay us one million dirham in addition to 9% interest mm -hmm. of this amount. Okay. Uh, calculated from which point? Uh, which, which uh, date? Calculated from the day that you filed your case. Oh, okay. 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 The day that we file your case, it will start calculating the, the interest. This is the legal interest. So say, for example, if your case takes one year, at the end of a year, the court will tell you, pay one million, they will tell them, pay one million, pay court fees, and also pay 9% of one million, which is 90,000 dirhams. Uh, as, a, as a legal interest. So more mm -hmm. or less, you will walk out of this without paying any cost because that 9% more or less in majority of cases will cover our fee. And then the court fees also will be returned. So you just have to write, uh, pick the right lawyer to win your case. Oh, such, such an interesting structure. Uh, this 9% really uh, makes a lot of, uh, a lot of sense. Uh, okay. And, um, uh, with the lump sum, uh, just to summarize something, we cannot say exact how much it will cost to uh, to hire the lawyer to represent in a specific case because there are a lot of things that like uh, you need to take in consideration before you will tell what, how much exactly it will be. But how much? It, uh, I believe that the court fees are fixed, right or not? Um, court fees based on the claim amount and nature of the case. Uh, if you're asking for money, if you're claiming money in, in, in a case, then 6% uh, of your claim amount mm -hmm. with a cap of 40,000 dirhams. Mm -hmm. This is Dubai's rules. Whatever I'm talking about here is about Dubai, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. let's focus so, on Dubai. Yeah. yeah, so this is, say for example, if you are uh, claiming 1 million, the judge will see uh, what is 6% of 1 million. And if it reached more than 40,000, they will just charge you 40,000. So the 40,000 is the cap. Excellent. Okay. So for me, uh, as a client, I need to keep in mind that I need to pay 40,000 plus whatever I agreed with my lawyer to represent me I initially to, to start the 40, it, it might be less than that because if your claim amount is not as high, it will be 6% only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got it. Is there any minimum claiming, amount? Yeah, yeah. So if you're claiming hundred thousand, yeah. So your uh, professional fee will be, or your um, court fee will be six thousand, uh, six thousand only. Okay. Sorry. Uh, six, yeah, six thousand, six percent. Okay, I got it. And uh, let's discuss uh, a little bit the hourly uh, hour, uh, hourly rates. One hour. Yeah. Our rates. <laughs> okay, like you mentioned that uh, there are different lawyers, different experience, uh, uh, and obviously there are different rates, but can you give us at least a range to give an, uh, to have an idea about of how course, much? Yes, we, uh, if you're talking about decent, good, professional lawyers in town, their hourly rates will be from uh, 1,200 dirham per hour up to, say, for example, I've heard there are some lawyers charging 4,000 dirham per hour. Okay. Okay. And uh, like, uh, we are closer to the, we are closer to the average rate. So we are closer we are to the, uh -huh. high. yeah. Then it's uh, good that you brought this up. Uh, maybe it's interesting for your viewers to know as well. Again, because of COVID nineteen, and because that we are so in line with what happening in the market, we cannot be. Um, uh, we, we won't be irresponsible, we won't be insensitive when it comes to this kind of situation. So we understand that people are really suffering. So aside, you know me, you know, I'm sharing free information on my platforms day in, day out, and um, I'm not asking for anything, I'm just trying to help. But aside from that, we have introduced another uh, policy as well, that um, prior to COVID, we we had the policy of one hour minimum. So if someone calls me and wants to book an appointment with me for consultation, they pay one hour. And then uh, even if they, they speak with me like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour will be charged. But now we don't have that. We have, in fact, 
uh, introduce micro consultation, which we do it uh, through Zoom. Either the client can call us on the phone or we can arrange a Zoom call or a Zoom meeting uh, perhaps to give them a, a, a micro consultation, which is 15 minutes only. So mm -hmm. the client, uh, we are doing this now on a daily basis. So the client, what we would do, they will uh, put down all their questions. They think thoroughly about what's the issues and they, they gather all the, information, the questions they have and then they will book uh, a consultation with us. So we go online and we give them an opinion on, uh, on the matter. We answer all their questions and trust me, most of them, they finish in 15 minutes. They don't need more than 15 mm -hmm. minutes. So mm -hmm. they just pay 15 minutes. And even in that 15 minutes, we have reduced our rate for people in need. So oh, we charge them even less. Yeah. So it's like 15 minutes, but if you make it times four, it will not be like the same rate as our one hour uh, consultation. We are oh, trying excellent. to make it easy for people to, to reach us and get, uh, get help when they need. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and just to understand, uh, how long will it take if uh, I will approach you and I will ask you assistance, assistance in, um, in drafting a contract, how many hours should I like keep in mind? And let's say, let's say, um, let's say it's uh, like sales and not sales purchase. It's for math, like agreement on the resale. I'm, I'm the buyer. I'm going to buy uh, a property from another individual. So, and I want to approach you to, to assist me with this. How many hours will it take? Okay. If we talk uh, in general about all type of agreements, that we definitely cannot say because some agreements take from two hours to 15, 20 hours for us to draft. But uh, to be precise on Form F and Sell and Purchase Agreements, uh, we charge normally two hours for a normal transaction. So two hours, it's for us to review the file, uh, understand the matter and then give opinion on uh, on the form F because form F as you know also is uh, is a template yeah you just fill up the information but then the addendum is the important part where all the terms and condition comes this is where the investor has to be extra careful that the other party or brokers uh, they are fully aware of what the, uh, is mentioned in the addendum and it's uh, protecting both for or the whole party is involved, yeah? So that is where the investors call us and ask us to, you know, to have a, to have a look. So I can say for Form F, minimum of two hours in normal situation, but when it comes to more complex, like buying commercial, buying hotels, buying plots, buildings, those will be definitely more. But uh, normal transactions, it's uh, two hours of our professional. Uh, okay, and if uh, if let's say I'm uh, a tenant or the landlord, like do you guys do tenancy contracts as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. See, the tenancy contract is, is again the same. You have the normal template, and then you have the terms and conditions. Uh, as they say, you know, the devil is in the details. So it comes to those small details or fine prints in the terms and condition, which people will get stuck at the uh, at the end of the relationship or even during the tenancy contract. So that's where we, we also advise on the terms and condition. Normally that is one hour in a service, not, not more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, Arash, and um, uh, based on the request that I am receiving, uh, I have quite uh, a lot of uh, requests from the landlord uh, that they are facing an issue when the tenant is not paying something. So let's say if I need to evict the tenant, do we consider it as an hourly fee or it's a lump sum that I need to pay uh, to the lawyer. Definitely, definitely lump sum. Yeah, it's okay. a litigation. So let's make it like a very clear. If it wants to go to court, if it's a court case, no matter rental, sale and purchase, whatever, if it goes to court, it's going to be lump sum. This is us. Huh? There are firms that they charge, even for litigation, they charge on hourly basis. I feel that's not fair for the client because at the end of the day, they charge them uh, an arm and a leg because it's, they keep you know, billing and billing and billing and uh, it's not gonna be fair for the client. The client won't be having an understanding of what's happening actually. For us, it's not as crystal clear. We tell them that this amount we charge you and we're not gonna ask for anything else till the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let me uh, repeat uh, to summarize a little bit about the hourly fees. So the range you said is around 1,200 to 4,000 dirhams uh, that the yes. lawyers charge. And um, uh, 
this fee applies when somebody is approaching you to to draft a contract or just to like to discuss with you something uh, as far as it's not going directly to the court correct right? arash one more question maybe it will be the last one in this topic i'm sure there are some people who are watching this who are right now in need to discuss something with you uh, is there some kind of uh, uh like not a free consultation but uh when do i need to pay hourly fee once i approach you so i have a problem yes i need to uh, i need to explain you the problem and i need to hear mm -hmm. what what you would say is it good or bad like uh am i paying for this or it's uh it's kind of uh, free okay so we have two type of things number one is case evaluation so in case evaluation, and the number two is uh, getting opinion. If the client doesn't know what's going on and wants to seek my opinion, and I will be actually giving legal advice, that is chargeable. They will ask, send me their question or they will ask me their question and I will answer them. For that, there is a charge. But if they have a case, they know they have a dispute with someone, they know that they have problem with the party, yeah? either it's a developer or it's a seller or it's a buyer or a tenant, landlord, uh, they know that there is an issue and needs to be taken care of. So they have a case. They will call me, they will tell me that Arash, I have this case, this is the detail of the case. Can you help me or not? For that, of course, I, I don't charge at all. Some lawyers I know, they charge, but I don't. I take on the case, I even study the case to see whether they have a right to claim or not. And I, I will tell them at the end that due to this reason, you don't have a case, and due to this reason, you have a strong case or a good case to, to proceed. For that, I will never charge the client. They can contact me and they can present their case. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I think it will help as well somebody because I'm sure somebody thinks that, oh, even if I'll just show what I have, show my concerns, even even uh, then I need to, to pay something. Uh, because there are lawyers, Dennis, that they're charging for that. So the moment you send them documents, they will tell you that, okay, pay me two, two hours in advance. I will look into it and tell you if you have oh, okay. a Okay, okay, I see. That's, that's why people, they have this uh, fear that all lawyers, they will charge uh, for case evaluation. Uh, okay, Rash, thank you so much for the information. It My was uh, super useful. I will uh, add your contact details in the description under this video on YouTube. And uh, guys, get in touch with Rush. Rush has a very good experience. I, I keep on watching his uh, videos. I'm, I'm learning a lot uh, from it. And I'm well, sure you will you. find as well a lot of value on their social platform. So follow up, uh, or follow, uh, follow Arash. Arash, any, any last words for the buyers, owners of the property over here, uh, and advice from the lawyer? <laughs> so my advice is that never think if you get an extra pair of eyes on your uh, investments will cost you more than the damages that you might uh, encounter if you don't have an extra help. Lawyers can help clients, whether they are investors, buyers, sellers, on to do whatever they are doing in a right way. We protect them to avoid any sort of uh, hustles and obstacles in the future. So even if they don't hire a lawyer, make sure to watch my content, learn from a lawyer free of charge, and I would be happy to assist them like that. Excellent, Arash, thank you so much. And uh, we'll stay in touch. Thanks for having me. Appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.